Hello again, boys and girls, and welcome to Pleasant Pathways from Poppy. It's storytelling time on this Wednesday. Today I have for you an old classic, The Emperor's New Clothes. This was written, believe it or not, way back in the 1800s by a man named Hans Christian Andersen. And uh, he's got a lot of books out there. You might want to take a look at him and some of the things he's written. But this is an interesting book. You can see the emperor right there in front of you with his underwear on. Now, what does that mean? You've read the story, I think you probably already know. All right, let's begin this story, this great, great classic of the 19th century, The Emperor's New Clothes. Let's experiment with a different way of reading to you today. I'm gonna sort of sit to the side here, so I don't have to flip back and forth. I think you can still probably see the pictures, and uh, that might be a better way to get these stories done so that you can see the pictures and listen to the text the same time without my flipping back and forth. Let's see how that works today, okay? Remember, Mr. Rogers said, it's a wonderful day in the neighborhood. Won't you be my neighbor? Let's read today. Many years ago, there lived an emperor who spent all his money on new clothes. He cared nothing about his country and only thought of driving in the park to show off his clothes. He had a costume for every hour of the day. Can you imagine having to change your clothes that many times during the day? I don't believe I can do that, but uh, he seemed to be so proud of what he wore that he wanted everybody to be able to see what he was wearing. He didn't spend any time taking care of his people. He spent most of his time taking care of his new clothes, didn't he? Many visitors came to the great city one day, two dishonest men arrived. Dishonest men. They told the people they were weavers and knew how to weave the loveliest cloth that anyone could possibly imagine. The colors and patterns were not only beautiful, they said, but the clothes made of, of their material became invisible to anyone who was unfit for his office or was just stupid. They would certainly be fine clothes to have, thought the emperor. By wearing them, I could tell the wise from the stupid. That cloth must be woven for me at once. And he gave the two weavers a great deal of money to begin their work. I want to mention one thing to you now. There's a word in here that we just said twice. That word was stupid. Don't ever call anybody that. He's saying to these people, these weavers are saying that anyone who is unfit for his office was stupid. Keep that in mind as we go through this, as you watch the emperor and how he responds to this. Okay, they immediately set up two looms. There are the looms right there to do the weaving. Asked for the finest silks and pretended to work far into the night, but they had nothing at all on those frames. Do you see any cloth, any, any yarn? I see nothing. I should like to know how they're getting on with the cloth thought the emperor, but he had an uneasy feeling when he remembered that anyone who was stupid would not be able to see it. Of course, he was certain he had nothing to fear, but thought it best to send somebody else to see how matters stood. In other words, how things were going with the dishonest weavers. I will send my honest minister to the weavers, thought the emperor. He can judge the cloth, for he has sense and intelligence. So the good minister entered the room where the two sat working at the empty looms. Mercy on me, I can't see a thing, thought the minister. Is it possible that I am stupid and not fit for my office? It certainly would never do to say I cannot see the cloth. Now, isn't that a beautiful piece of cloth, asked both of the weavers. So the minister said, oh, it is beautiful. What a pattern and what colors. I shall tell the emperor that I like the fabric very much. Soon everybody in the city was talking about the wonderful power that lay in the cloth. Now the emperor wanted to see it. So accompanied by a number of attendants, including the honest minister who had been there before, he went to visit the dishonest weavers. Your majesty, isn't it magnificent, cried the minister, pointing to the empty looms. What's this, thought the emperor. I don't see anything. Am I not fit, fit to be the emperor, he said. And he said it out loud. Oh, it is very beautiful indeed.
The attendants stared and stared. Yet although they saw nothing, they all exclaimed, Oh, it is very beautiful indeed. You see, these people were afraid to say they didn't see anything because they were thought they thought that people would have thought them to be stupid. So they just pretended to think they saw it and then reported back to the emperor that they did. So it gets deeper and deeper here, doesn't it? They advised him to have clothes made of this splendid cloth and to wear them in the great procession soon to take place. Everybody was perfectly pleased with the suggestion. The night before the procession, the weavers sat up at their work. They pretended to take the fabric from the loom and cut the empty air with big scissors. They sewed with threadless needles or needles without thread in them and finally said, at last the clothes are ready. Boy, they have a lot of people fooled, don't they? The emperor and his attendants arrived. The weavers lifted their arms in the air as if they held something in their hands. See, they said, here are the trousers, here's the shirt, and here is the cloak. They are all as light as a cobweb. A person would think that he had on nothing at all. Keep that in mind. Of course, everybody replied, but they could see nothing, for there was nothing to see. Well, your majesty, now undress, said the weavers, then we shall put on the new clothes. The emperor took off his clothes. There you see him in his underwear. And the weavers pretended to put on his new suit. The emperor turned in front of a mirror to view himself from all sides. How well they fit, said everybody. What colors, what splendid garments they are. They are waiting at the door with the canopy, which is to be carried over your majesty in the procession, said the master of the ceremonies. Well, I am ready, said the emperor, and he turned around once more before the mirror, staring at himself. He thought he was splendid. He thought he was very well dressed, didn't he? The attendants who were to carry the train of the cloak fumbled on the floor with their hands as, they, as if they were picking it up. They were even picking up the train behind him, the imaginary train, so that nobody would think that anybody in this whole uh, uh, township was stupid. Isn't that amazing how prideful they were? Then they walked along holding their hands high. They did not dare let it be known they could see nothing. And so the emperor marched in the procession under the canopy, and everybody on the street and in the windows cried, The emperor's new clothes are magnificent. No one would admit that he saw nothing, for that would have meant that he was unfit for his office, or that he was, again, this word, stupid. He's only in his underwear, said a little child. One person whispered to another what the child had said, but he's really, really only in his underwear, at last shouted all the people. The emperor had a queer feeling, for it seemed to him that they were right. Then he thought, I must bear up to the end. So he bore himself still more proudly, and the attendants walked along behind him and carrying the train, which was not there at all. Isn't that some story? The emperor, so proud of the clothes that he wore every day, and these dishonest weavers show up and say that they can weave the most beautiful clothing of all. He was so impressed, that being the, the uh, emperor, that he wanted to see what these guys could do. And then when he sent his people out to spy on the weavers, no one wanted to be thought of themselves to be stupid so they came back and gave a good report to the emperor that the clothes were absolutely splendid. It took a small child in the end to see what was really there and report it back that he didn't have any clothes on at all. And then everybody chimed in saying, you're right, he didn't, except for the emperor who continued to wear his underwear, making people believe that he thought that everything he was wearing was the splendid work of these deceitful weavers. You can't let pride keep you from speaking up when you know the truth. So if you're like the minister or if you're like the attendants 
and you kept telling lies about the fact that there was good things coming off the loom and there were beautiful clothes, be more like the little child, the little child who saw what he saw and told the truth, wasn't trying to hide anything, speak up. Also, never go out into public with your underwear, okay? <laughs> There's another good moral to the story. Hope you enjoyed that one. We have a story especially for Easter tomorrow, and I hope you'll tune back in to Poppy's Pleasant Pathways. Make it a great day today.